Blue fragrances. Love them or hate them, they're super versatile. You can wear them pretty much anywhere, anytime, and the vast majority of people are going to actually really like them. One of the best things is getting a blue fragrance that's not going to cost you all that much money. So that's what we're doing today. We're taking a look at seven anytime, anywhere blue fragrances that won't break the bank. These fragrances you can pick up for under $40, sometimes a lot under $40, assuming you're shopping at discounters like FragranceNet or Fragrance X. So let's jump into it. First up, Versace. Dylan Blue. Yeah, this one right here is kind of that nice mid-range blue fragrance. It doesn't come across super cheap. It's maybe not as high end as something like a Blue de Chanel or a Dior Sauvage, but it gets the job done just as well. Got bergamot, ambroxan, incense, and grapefruit. Really super versatile. This thing, like I said, you can wear pretty much anywhere, anytime. I'd say out of everything in this list here today, it might even be the most versatile. It's a big time compliment puller. I love the little bit of smoke you get from the incense in here. And it is still to this day, one of the more affordable, uh, we'll say name brand blue fragrances out there. Because you can find a lot of blue fragrances out there that are cheaper than Versace Dylan Blue, but they don't have that, that recognizable name behind it. You know, go up to an average everyday person and just say, hey, have you ever heard of Versace? And they'll go, yeah, idiot, I have. But if you go up to somebody and you say, hey, have you ever heard of Halloween man? And they'll be like, why, why you call me man? I don't even know you. Or have you heard of Pepe Jeans? Nah, I heard of Pepe Le Pew. So you get what I'm saying. Versace has a little bit of that clout to it. Dylan Blue, fantastic for versatility. Doesn't cost that much and really attractive bottle. Next up, we're going with Missoni Parfum Pour Ohm. And this one does have an attractive bottle too, as long as you don't get the tester, which is what I have right here because it has no cap. If you get the full presentation, it comes with a really nice magnetic cap. Some people may not care about that, but every time I look at this bottle, I just think to myself, dang it, I should have got the full presentation. This one has grapefruit, ginger, lavender, and woods. And this smells similar to Bleu de Chanel. So you could think of this as a fragrance that's gonna get you really close to the BDC without that price tag, which is a really attractive proposition. And this is one, at least for the mainstream, that gets overlooked. This thing is a huge compliment puller, massively versatile, just like Bleu de Chanel that it is inspired by. We'll say that's a good way of putting it. Some people might say ripping off, but I would say, man, that sounds way too harsh. Inspired by that's positivity, inspiration. Yeah. Missoni Parfum Peron, though, this is a, a wonderful scent. It does have a nice quality to it when you spray it on. It doesn't have that kind of alcoholic tinge. It doesn't have a, an air of cheapness about it. And like I said, if you get the full presentation, it looks great in a collection or on a shelf. Okay, next fragrance is going to be, yeah, I'd say this is probably my least favorite personally of this bunch. But if we're just talking everyday wear for an average guy, it's going to crush it. It absolutely will. It's Jimmy Choo urban hero. It's got leather, ambergris, black pepper, and uh, finger lime as one of the notes in the fragrance. And finger lime, depending on where you're looking, uh, might be referred to as a caviar lime. So the reason that this one gets hated on is it does have a little bit of that Paco Rabanne Invictus sort of bubblegum sweetness to it. And uh, a lot of times that gets fragrances hated on. But like I said, if we're just talking you know, compliment factor, mass appeal. This one has it. That sweetness is attention grabbing. It's got a bit of freshness in there as well. And it's it's really modern smelling. So some people won't like that. They'll say, yeah, modern in the sense it smells like a lot of other things out there. And other people will be like modern as in, heck yeah, boy, this gets me noticed. Next fragrance is from Azaro. <laughs> like I said, maybe not as much name recognition as a Versace or even a Jimmy Choo, but it's Azaro chrome extreme this one really nice it's got kind of a similarity to aqua du Jour profundo from giorgio armani so it's in that style if you like that fragrance you'll probably like this one green mandarin sea notes juniper cashmere and another modern type fragrance with this bit of like fuzziness to it you know this slight bit of warmth that mixes and mingles together with the freshness and sweetness in the opening and mid this is going to be in my opinion one of the better chrome flankers over the last number of years there have been some chrome flankers that, that, that frankly sucked. 
Yeah, some some chrome flankers that were pretty, pretty terrible. Looking at you, chrome under the pole. Ugh. In case you're unaware of that fragrance, it's it's alcohol free. And they say it's like moisturizing for your skin. Wow, that's actually, actually that doesn't matter. Moisturizing? Who cares if a fragrance is moisturizing? You know, you spray it in the crook of your elbow. Oh, congratulations, you just, you just moisturized uh, a little circular spot on your arm. My elbow, it's, it's a little bit rough. Let me just, we're good now. But anyway, uh, under the pole, uh, the inside of it is all this white liquid, right? You, you see where I'm going with that? It's a white liquid, it's very milky looking. And when you spray it on your skin, it just kind of sits there. So you get nice loads of white wherever you spray. Mm. Uh, thankfully though, Chrome Extreme, really good. I wouldn't say I like it quite as much as Chrome Aqua, a personal favorite of mine, but Chrome Extreme, not far behind. Up next from Bulgari, Aqua Atlantique. And this one actually does get compared a little bit to Versace Dylan Blue. Maybe with a little extra Dior Sauvage mixed in. You could kind of think of it that way. Dylan Blue mixed with Sauvage equals Aqua Atlantique. It, it's kind of a quick and dirty way to break it down. <laughs> but it kind of works. C notes, ambergris, citrus, amber wood, which really uh, just means there's there's a lot of that ambroxany, amber woody feel to the scent, along with, of course, a marine citrus scent profile in the opening and mid. Aqua Atlantique never seemed to take off in a big way. I mean, frankly, most of the aqua fragrances don't seem to take off in a major way. The original, I think, is still the best seller if we're talking about at retail. Uh, aqua Amara, of course, got hyped heavily in the community for a while, but if we're talking just retail sales, uh, it didn't do so hot. And Aqua Atlantique, surprisingly, apparently not absolutely crushing it either. You'd think it would be, though, because it's a solid, uh, wearable, day-to-day -day blue fragrance that it basically checks all the boxes people would want in a versatile scent. Other than the bottle kind of is annoying because it just lays flat like this and takes up a lot of room. But other than that, really nice fragrance. Next fragrance is from Coach, it is Coach Blue. Now really any of the Coach for Men fragrances you could put in here. Uh, you could put the original Coach Platinum or this one. They all would be usable and interchangeable and pretty much the same place at the same times. This one has absinthe, lime, ozonic notes, and cedar in the fragrance. It's got this slight green edge around everything else. Lime gives it a, a slightly different take on citrus than you'll find in most of these fragrances because most of these are gonna be featuring bergamot or grapefruit and sometimes orange. Lime doesn't get used as often. I know we had finger lime earlier in Urban Hero, but that's different than just a straight up good old lime. This one's got a little bit of that shower gel kind of vibe, you know, fresh out of the shower shower, clean, brisk, that kind of thing going on in the opening. Not too heavily sweet and uh, like a lot of these, very modern. You know, there's kind of a, a common thread that you can find through a lot of these scents. Coach Blue, I would say, is the most overlooked in the Coach line. Most people seem to gravitate toward Coach Platinum or the original, because the original a lot of times is the cheapest, but Coach Blue works just as well for pulling attention and for being able to be worn anywhere, anytime. Last one is Tommy Hilfiger Impact. And this one has a gimmick, in case you're unaware of it, it is in the cap. So you take off the cap, and this is only for 100 mil bottle sizes. So keep that in mind. You get the 50 mil, you're not gonna get this gimmick. You're gonna be very sad because while everybody else is gimmicking out with their impact, you're gonna be sitting there holding a very sad impact with no gimmicks. So what is it? You, you take the cap off and there's a cap on the cap. It's like Inception. It's a flanker of a flanker, a cap on the cap. So you take off the cap on the cap and lo and behold, there's a little spray in there. It's a little tiny bottle. Yeah, so they have this little, this little baby bottle travel size of impact, which fits inside the cap. So essentially you take the cap off the bottle, you take the cap off the cap, then you take the cap off the bottle that is inside the cap of the cap of the main bottle and then you can spray it. It's just a travel spray, yeah. So basically you can just take the cap off with you and wherever you go, you can give yourself some sprays. So anyway, this one has citrus, it has woods, along with Akigala wood, which is not the same as just, it's just woods. It's like clear wood, basically a, 
a derivative of patchouli, a very clean and woody patchouli. And then there's also a little bit of amber in there as well. So basically with this one, it is what the note profile says there. It's basically a citrusy, fresh, woodsy, a masculine scent. There's a little hint of sweetness and spice kind of around the edges there, some fresh spiciness, really easy to pull off. I do like Impact Intense a bit more. So if you're just looking to pick up one, Impact Intense, in my opinion, a bit better. Different style of fragrance though. This one is more fresh, versatile, you know, anytime, anywhere, that kind of scent and Impact Intense leans a bit more toward fall and winter, a little heavier on the sweetness and spice. Impact though is a solid fragrance, very, very easy to pull off. And as of this video, not that expensive at Fragrance X and it's very specific. Now I'm assuming that they will change this in the future. So this is in the future and the prices don't match up. Sorry, but as of this video, when I'm filming the 100 ml size bottle on Fragrance X is less than the 50 ml size bottle. Yeah, if memory serves, the 100 ml size bottle was something like $35, whereas the 50 ml was in the 50 some odd range. And at Fragrance Net, it was even more. So 100 ml size bottle at Fragrance X, great price on it right now. In the future, <laughs> they may fix it. So ugh, my bad. Uh, Fragrance X though, they, they do have a tendency to sometimes do that. I've seen in the past where they've had the larger size bottle, cheaper than the smaller size bottle. There's obviously something going on behind the scenes with their, their pricing and all that stuff. Their, I guess, system that they use everything to, you know, to price everything. Sometimes it's, uh, a little wonky. So there we go, my friends. Seven Anytime Blue Fragrances. Not going to break the bank. As always, thank you guys for hanging with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. This one's not 18 minutes long. We did it. Whoop.